The Teen Phantom Part 24 in audio. The thought of fun is like drugs it is a false ecstasy you get hooked on it, you have what you thought would be fun then you feel miserable, it was not what you would like to have spent your time doing, it was not as rewarding and satisfying as you expected it to be, you will do the same thing again, you are still searching for that ecstasy all because you have no purpose in life. Bill looks at Charlotte in awe. I thought there was not a soul on earth that realizes the regret of having fun, I have done it many times it was so depressing to think of the things I would have liked to accomplish instead of wasting my time, of course usually I let others persuade me that it would be so much fun, sometimes I even manage to persuade myself. Many are addicted to fun in search of their ecstasy bill. Charlotte don't you find it hard to discipline yourself even when you know it is to your own benefit? Happily not, proper diet, rest and exercise cause one to think positive, a great purpose in life makes you resolute with the mindset and love for fact and truth, purpose in life is important for self-discipline, those who have a purpose in life has no reason to search for that false ecstasy in mind-altering chemicals, the false ecstasy in religion or the false ecstasy of fun, we must give the youth reason to live beyond their self-centered little world, the greatest purpose in life benefits the whole universe. Charlotte I think I get proper exercise, I know I fail to eat as I should though I don't eat in restaurants or fast food, it is upsetting and embarrassing for Susie, I will take her to a restaurant then I will not eat. Bill my catching flies with my hands has nothing to do with karate, it is sort of a trick Jim is very good at it too. I showed him and he caught on very quickly. But he is a master. Bill covers his face with his hands, and rests his elbows on the table how could I, I promised I wouldn't tell anyone. Charlotte is stunned, she is swept away in her reminiscing thoughts, that was a terrible thing for her to do to Jim she should have known, the way he held Nikki standing on his hands to retrieve the knife, Nikki has known and has kept it from her. Bill is in misery muttering in a whisper you are a stupid idiot Bill. Charlotte reaches out and takes hold of both of Bill's wrists he lets Charlotte pull his hands away from his face, don't be sick over it, it was not intentional, Jim will not care now, he will never hear a word from me about it. I realize I treated him worse than you did, I cannot tell you the details but I humiliated him terribly, he may appreciate me knowing about it now. Bill cheer up, you are an honest and loyal person don't beat yourself down like this, I sort of tricked you and I am sorry. You are a very kind little girl Charlotte. On impulse, Charlotte speaks as though she is reproving Bill. I am not being kind I am being honest with you. I realize that, you are still a very kind little girl as well, I trust you with my life, would it be okay if I told you about Jim? I would like to know I am sure Jim will not care or think less of you for it, no one will hear a word from me about it. Bill looks very serious as he commences. It was right after Jim got that part-time job he has he came to me and he asked me if I could get a friend of mine to give him karate lessons keeping it secret, of course all of his training is confidential, you have to promise you will not disclose anything about those you train with so I got them together, he lives not far from Jim's place, it was very convenient, Ching Che Chen does not teach the ordinary type of karate it is the real hardcore stuff so Jim is actually a lethal weapon. Bill sees Charlotte shocked look when he speaks Ching's name. What's wrong Charlotte? Charlotte feels a little uneasy. Do you know Nikki, Ren, Chen? With uncertainty Bill, says no, very softly with a distant look then with seriousness, I know why you looked as you did you know Ching. Che, Chen don't you? Yes, he is a very close friend, Nikki his granddaughter is my closest friend she helps me in everything I do. I never knew he had a granddaughter. Charlotte, all of this should be confidential. Yes Bill it will be, I am beginning to feel like I could trust you with my life too, 
I would feel comfortable in letting you know many of my secrets if we were in private but not here. Bill looks down he looks to be having emotional problems. Charlotte, this may sound foolish this is the most wonderful day of my life, I will never forget this day, you have touched the deepest part of me, I have no way of explaining it. Bill looks into Charlotte's face with tear-filled eyes as she says, I have similar feelings, this is like the day I met Nikki, she is like my sister, I feel very close to you it is as if I have known you forever with great love and care Charlotte says softly Bill, we are much closer than friends. Charlotte's eyes are not dry either. Bill looks a little to the left of Charlotte and says here Susie comes from the other side of the restrooms, I hadn't noticed when she came out it looks as if she had gone for a walk. Susie settles herself down beside Bill. She is in much better spirits than when she left and she has washed off her makeup. Susie looks at Bill very carefully then looks over at Charlotte with a concerned look you two have been crying. Charlotte feels tenseness as she speaks. Sort of I guess, Bill and I have been discussing some emotional things, did you take a nice walk? I was just visiting with a young couple with a sweet little girl, they look very young to have a little girl that old. How old was she Bill asks. I don't know she may be 8, I never heard her call them mother or father she was curled up in the lady's lap like a little girl would that really loved her mother and her mother adored her. They may have adopted her that would account for them being so young, what are their names Bill asks. I don't know they never introduced themselves I never introduced myself either, the little girl was very strange, when I walked by their table she says with a real sweet smile, Susie would you like to sit down and visit for a while. She was really cagey I, Bill interrupts Susie she knew your name. Susie looks shocked, yes I didn't realize that I must have been very upset when I left here. I was upset with her for the different remarks she made the first thing she says when I sit down you are having problems with your boyfriend are you, that infuriated me but I told her I was, her father told me of many different problems, he told me how to cope with the problems, it all made sense but some of it I did not like anyway. When this would happen the little girl would make a remark that let me know she knew what I was thinking. Her father would look at her and smile then he would go back to explaining something else to me. There was something about him that made you want to be with him and listen to him. I was getting ready to leave and I was thinking how upset I was with Bill he always thinks he knows what is best for me and the little girl with a real charming smile says but he does. That really embarrassed and infuriated me, I don't know what to think of it all, they were such a strange family. What color was the little girl's hair? The prettiest gold I have ever seen and she had earrings just like yours, why do you ask Charlotte? It may be a little girl I have heard about, some think she is an angel. Susie jumps up and runs behind the building. A few seconds later, she comes walking back with a sad face. As she sits down, she says, they're gone, with a depressed attitude. Were you going to ask them if they were angels? That is supposed to be real funny isn't it since you don't believe in angels? No Susie, I was serious I was not making light of you for believing in angels, I am having second thoughts about angels myself. Susie gives Bill a serious look yes I was or maybe ask them their name if they were not angels. Bill has a pleasant smile I think that would have been a very clever thing to do. Charlotte is shocked at Susie's experience she is under surveillance by Mello, Jane, and little love perhaps it is for Charlotte's safety. Bill does not believe in things spiritual, angels, mental telepathy, miracles, or beings on other planets. He says God did not make the earth in six days, what do you think Charlotte? Spirits, I definitely do, but I do not see them as the religious society sees them. Spirit is like electricity, it is one of the energy forces or power of the universes and beyond to infinity, which we do not know much about yet. At one time, we were as ignorant about electricity, 
as for angels, I think so not with wings or a halo, they are just spiritual messengers. Mental telepathy I definitely do I have experienced it, beings on other planets is very probable if I were our great creator I certainly would have, and for miracles I believe in them, sometime, if you would like to go I will take you to a revival meeting where you can see teeth filled with gold it just pours in from nowhere and if you have a tooth that needs filling you may have a miracle performed on you. Susie, I would not be so concerned about Bill believing anything if I were you, we should live our lives by what we know not by our ignorance. Those who believe things of which they have no understanding are fools it will only bring about problems in their lives. When Bill sees and understands he will believe that is what is important. With some even after they know and understand they will not believe because they do not want it the way it is. You cannot disbelieve your problems away neither can lies bring anything into existence, as for our great creator creating the earth in six days, there is too much evidence that our great creator took millions or billions of years, I am not saying our great creator could not create it in six days, but there is much evidence that shows that it was a lengthy process. Time has little importance with the great creator. Time is meaningful only to our physical being, spirits live in infinity. Susie looks at Charlotte very seriously before she speaks, why do you say great creator instead of God? Because our great creator is not a God, the meaning of God is an object of worship it is not a creator. The religions have just named the great creator, God, as you would name your dog animal, it is actually debasing, as our great creator is one of a kind, there is none like the great creator. Therefore, considering him as a god is bringing him down as one of the idol gods people worship. Charlotte, you love dissecting the truth, you examining every minute particle don't you? I have never heard it expressed that way but yes I do Bill. You put it back together and it has more life than it did before. You really think so do you, you are very clever Bill. I would like to have you on my journalism team do you think you would like journalism? I would love it I plan to take it next year, the reason I have not been taking it my father doesn't want me to, he says journalists don't make a decent living. He is counting on me being a doctor or a lawyer preferably a lawyer, he says law is where the money is. That is true about the money but my conscience would suffer. Knowing you as I do Charlotte I can understand, you view it as I do, I would not be happy living the life of a lawyer I detest confrontations, many laws are not for justice, many laws are only to accommodate the prominent and the wealthy. Susie is very disturbed and speaks up very brazenly. Bill, how can you speak like that? I thought you wanted to be a lawyer you said it would make your father very happy. I thought that was what you wanted. Bill seems to be very calm and he speaks very honest and sincerely. I went along with my father, I do want him to be happy but I would not be happy, your father caused me to see things more realistic. I must be honest with my father, I hope to work it out with him in the very near future. My father, you have talked to my father. Yes, I have spent a lot of time with him and helped him on his ranch I really enjoyed it, it was like a vacation, when you were visiting friend or relation that week a while back, I spent the whole week with them I love your parents Susie. Behind my back. I don't believe this I didn't know you were that kind of person what else have you done behind my back. I knew it would not make you happy I love your parents Susie, it doesn't make it behind your back if you don't know everything I do in my life does it, does it make you angry. I realize it shouldn't but it does a little, I know I should feel grateful, but I have a bit of a problem with the way my parents live, I should not be upset with you. I realize you think like my father, you make a better son than I do a daughter. Susie softens up a bit she speaks with a little more decorum. It doesn't matter now Bill. Charlotte, I am curious, where do you and the little girl buy your earrings, I have never seen them in any of the stores. I don't know where she gets hers, 
my father gave me these. Did he make them then? He may have he is certainly clever enough. The little girl must know your father then. She may but my father has never spoken of her to me. Bill has been watching Charlotte with a slight smile when they make eye contact, he speaks very softly, you are a clever little thing. Then Charlotte realized she had not hidden the whole truth from Bill.